Greetings, dear connoisseurs of jewellery. Today we are going to talk about the most luxurious perures from the collection of the British royal family. For many centuries, members of the House of Windsor acquired many valuable specimens for their treasury. Maximalism in jewellery has always been appreciated in the royal palace world, which is why perures, sets of jewellery designed to be worn together, hold a special place among members of the royal family. After all, it is the jewellery sets that create the impression. One of the most magnificent in this regard is the Kent Amethyst Pura. This set includes a necklace, a pair of earrings, three brooches, and a pair of hair combs with large facet amethysts and cabochons. The Peru originally belonged to the Duchess of Kent, mother of Queen Victoria, who wore the brooch in the wedding portrait of her granddaughter, Princess Victoria, and Crown Prince Frederick William of Prussia in 1858. After her death, the Peru passed to Queen Victoria, who inherited it as part of a royal heirloom passed from one queen to another. Queen Alexandra used elements of it on her outfit during the state opening of Parliament in 1902, although she was not a fan of amethysts. Elizabeth the mother also wore a version of the brooch with three pendants several times during World War II. Amethyst is considered a stone of mourning, so the brooch was used at funerals and memorial ceremonies. Queen Elizabeth II inherited the amethyst perure in 1952, but wore a necklace and earrings from this set only twice during a state visit to Portugal and on the 40th anniversary of her accession to the throne. The three-pendant brooch was also rarely seen on her, mostly during important events such as state visits and momentous occasions such as the Dance of the Decades at Buckingham Palace. Despite this, the brooch originally belonging to the Duchess of Kent remained one of the Queen's favourite pieces of jewellery, and was often used by her throughout the decades, especially with purple outfits. The question of who will wear this set in the future remains open. Now let's move on to the ruby peru with oriental crown. This exquisite set has its roots in the reign of Queen Victoria. Her husband, Prince Albert, inspired by the oriental jewellery displayed at an international exhibition, commissioned a unique tiara for his wife. Later, Victoria and Albert worked with the Gerard Jewellery Workshop to complete the collection with a necklace an earring set with diamonds and opals to match the crown. Queen Mother attached special significance to this set, calling it a true family heirloom. On her 80th birthday, she sparkled in this exquisite piece of jewellery. Next on the list is the Durbar Emerald Perure. This perure contains not only Elizabeth II's favourite pieces of jewellery, but also iconic pieces worn by members of the royal family. However, Thanks to the disassembly of the jewellery, many people don't realise that the newer brooches are actually parts of old jewellery, or that different pieces are combined within the same collection. The story of the Peru began when Augusta, wife of Prince Adolphus Frederick of England, Duke of Cambridge, won the grand prize in a charity raffle, a box of 40 beautiful emeralds, named Cambridge Emeralds in honour of the Duke's title. Some of these stones were used by Augusta to create jewellery and the rest remained in placers. After her death, this collection was inherited by her daughter, Mary Adelaide, and then it was divided among her for children. One of them was Mary of Teck, the future wife of King George V. However, the division of the emeralds was unfair, and almost all of them went to her son Francis, who gave them to his lover, Lady Nellie Kilmory. After the death of her brother Mary, who became the king's wife, demanded that her brother's gifts be returned. This Nellie had to do under pressure from the queen. Some sources claim that Queen Mary eventually paid Lady Kilmory a token sum for the jewellery. Mary put all the emeralds in the new jewellery. Therefore, in the name Cambridge and Delhi Durbar, the first part, Cambridge, is related to the Cambridge emeralds. The second part comes from the fact that some of the jewellery was created for a special event, the coronation of the new emperor and empress of India, George V and Queen Mary. The coronation took place in Delhi, and Durbar translates to residence of the monarch. The Peru also features jewellery given to the Queen in India to commemorate the coronation. For example, Elizabeth II's favourite bracelet and favourite emerald necklace also belong to this collection. The emeralds that now adorn the Vladimir tiara also belong to Cambridge jewellery and for a time adorned the imperial crown of Delhi Durbar. Princess Diana also wore a choker made from this pariura. The Cambridge and Delhi Durbar parole thus includes Delhi Durbar crown Cambridge emerald choker Cambridge emerald earrings Delhi Durbar necklace 
Delhi Durbar Brooches Cambridge Emerald Corsage Jewelry, deconstructed into brooches Cambridge Bracelet So, next up is the George VI Sapphire Pearl. The necklace and earrings, set with sapphires and diamonds, were the first and most luxurious gift given to Elizabeth II for her wedding to Prince Philip in 1947. Provided by Carrington and co. by the bride's father, King George VI, the jewellery took pride of place in her personal jewellery collection and became known as the George VI Sapphires. Elizabeth II often wore this set on special occasions, seeking to attract attention with the brilliance and grandeur of the jewellery. In 1952, the Queen approached Gerard with the desire to add a pendant to the necklace. The jeweler shortened the necklace by one link and made it into a pendant that could also be worn as a brooch as it was detachable. Elizabeth II liked the set so much that she ordered the same bracelet and ring from the jeweler in 1963, much to the surprise of family members as the queen was not a fan of drawing attention to her hands. But the beauty of the bracelet and ring was something she could not resist. The only missing element was a similarly styled tiara, as up to that point Elizabeth II had combined sapphire jewelry with diamond set tiaras. In 1963, the Queen purchased a sapphire and diamond necklace by Princess Louise of Belgium to make a tiara to match the style of the necklace, and earrings given to her by King George VI. Elizabeth II chose this tiara for a banquet at the Ritz Hotel to celebrate her Golden Jubilee in 2002. Camilla, for her part, wore the George VI sapphires for the first time in December 2020 at a reception at Buckingham Palace during the visit of South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. Let's talk about the gorgeous turquoise perore worn with great affection by Princess Margaret. Born in 1930, Margaret was not originally intended to be the daughter of a king. Her father, George VI, was second in line to the throne after his older brother Edward VIII. However, when Edward abdicated in favor of marriage to American actress Wallace Simpson, Margaret's status changed dramatically and she became second in the line of claimants to the British throne, only behind her older sister Elizabeth. As a child, Margaret received her first piece of turquoise and pearl jewelry from her parents, and on her coming of age she was presented with a gorgeous Persian tiara decorated with turquoise, combined with a necklace, pendant earrings, a large brooch and several hair ornaments. This gift was not only materially valuable, but also full of emotional significance, as in the language of stones turquoise symbolizes love, making it especially precious to Margaret. The Persian tiara included in this set was made by Gerards in the early 20th century and originally belonged to Queen Mary, who gave it to her daughter-in-law Elizabeth Bosleon, Princess Margaret's mother, in 1923 on their wedding day to the Duke of York. The initial design of the tiara was modified by the Duchess of York, who removed the Kukoshnik-shaped upper frame, deeming it outdated, and the tiara took on a lighter and more modern look that Margaret inherited. As her collection of turquoise jewellery grew, Margaret began to treasure these jewels. Many of her jewels were subsequently inherited by her daughter Lady Sarah. However, the fate of the tiara itself, the necklace and brooch from the original set remains unknown. It is thought that they were probably in Margaret's use during her lifetime and may now have returned to the royal treasury. Attention should be drawn to Queen Alexandra's wedding parure one of the most exquisite and delightful pieces of jewellery chosen with great pleasure by the Duchess of Cambridge, a diamond necklace with pearl drop pendants. The history of this necklace is full of interesting events. In 1863, Queen Victoria's eldest son, Prince Albert, married Princess Alexandra of Denmark. Alexandra, the elder sister of Maria Fyodorova, wife of Russian Emperor Alexander III, was not only noted for her beauty but also for her exquisite taste, both sisters often imitated each other in their outfits and jewellery, creating a wave of admiration in European society. For the wedding, Prince Albert presented Alexandra with a diamond perure from Gerard & Co., consisting of a tiara, necklace, earrings, and brooch. This gift was in keeping with the high status of the Princess of Wales and future Queen. Diamond inlays and drop pearls gave the jewellery sophistication and elegance. At her wedding, Alexandra wore a necklace, brooch and earrings made from this perure, and instead of a tiara, she wore a wreath of flowers on her head. Although the tiara has not survived to this day, it is likely that the diamonds and other jewels from this piece of jewellery were reused to create new fashions. 
Nevertheless, this tiara may have been transformable, and Alexandra wore it in various variations, removing some of the links to change the appearance. Queen Alexandra was famous not only for her beauty and style, but also for her ability to dress luxuriously and economically. She did not spend money on fashionable outfits, but often remodeled old ones. And it was the same with jewelry. Queen Elizabeth II's grandmother Mary of Tech sometimes wore a necklace from her mother-in-law's wedding papyrus. And then her daughter-in-law Elizabeth Bowles Lyons continued the tradition and appeared in Queen Alexandra's necklace at ceremonial events. Queen Elizabeth II often wore a brooch or earrings from her great-grandmother's wedding pura. And now it's Princess Catherine's turn. But last but not least the beautiful Brazilian aquamarine pearl. The queen received a set of aquamarine and diamond earrings and necklace as a coronation gift from the president of Brazil. A few years later, Her Majesty entrusted the jewelry house Gerard to make a tiara to complement the set. Later, Elizabeth also received several other pieces of aquamarine and diamond jewelry from Brazil, including a bracelet, brooch and hair clip. In aquamarine Peru with a tiara, necklace, earrings, bracelet and even a ring, the monarch appeared in 1994 in Moscow, at a banquet organized by Boris Yeltsin in the Faseet chamber. Well, that's all for today. Write your comments which of the collections you liked the most. If you liked the video put a like, and I'll say goodbye to you all the best.